Hello. So, welcome to week four. Uh, well, it's it's week five of the module. Anyway, you know now why I'm calling them this. It's week four because it matches up with um, chapter four in the textbook. And now we're moving to uh, the A theory and the B theory of time. So these are two broadly, yeah, well, different ways in which we can try to, well, different ways to model or to think about or do different theories of how time is, in fact. And uh, last time we had a look at McTaggart's argument for the unreality of time. Um, and it had some tricky premises in there, uh, some arguments that were debatable, questionable whether they're even coherent. But there's something to McTaggart's idea, I think. And we're going to be seeing that this week, um, even if that that idea that McTaggart has got that the A series is contradictory, that is, we can't organise events in terms of the A properties of past, present and future, it somehow leads to contradiction. Even if his argument there was of dubious intelligibility, um, there's something to it. And I think that we can make sense of the kind of thought that McTaggart's having. Um, it's not going to be the thought that McTaggart had, but it's the kind of thought that he had spelled out in slightly different terms. So yeah, we, uh, as, you, as you'll know then, it was um, the B series was, just a reminder, was to organise events in terms of earlier than and later than relations. And those were fixed relations, so, you know, World War Two is always after World War One. always was after World War One. so there's things are kind of stuck in their ordering in the timeline and that doesn't change. But the A series then was to organise things in terms of past, present and future and there McTaggart thought you get a change. And uh, yeah, the A theory is kind of built upon, I mean the A theory, A series, it's built upon that kind of McTaggarty, McTaggart idea and the B theory is built upon the the B theory, or the B series, and that idea. So we'll see how that goes in a minute. All right. So this first video, I'm just going to introduce these notions. Then we're going to get uh, introduce the different versions of the theories, and then we're going to look at them in more detail in the following videos. So yeah, there was also this metaphor in um, McTaggart where he talks about the flow of time, and it is a metaphor. And I, I had this, uh, and it was such a good piece of animation that I thought I couldn't let it, I had to have to have to include it in more than one lecture, surely, I mean I can't just have it in, so here he goes, look at that, ah, so it's, we either think about time as like a river, this is a metaphor that flows past us, and that's what that illustrates, we kind of, we're on a boat and the river of time flows past us, so you can imagine there if we're moored up in the river and it's coming, flowing past, or we can alternatively think about and look at this. Oh, oh. Let's have it again. Oh. We can either or we can think about ourselves as being moving through time. So again, time is the river, but this time we move through it in some sense. And th these these are both meant to be metaphors which get to the idea that our experience of time certainly seems to have time being dynamic. It's got this movement, it's got this flow to it. We've talked about this a few times already. Now, <coughs> we can understand the A theory and the B theory in terms of these metaphors. So the A theory, in effect, wants to say there is really some truth in the metaphor of time's flow, that reality or, you know, the world or well, reality, let's say, really is in some sense tensed. There really is a sense in which things move from past uh, or from future to present to past, in some sense. So we're going to try and make sense of that. And there are three kind of metaphysical theories, and these are the ones that we're going to be predominantly focusing on in, in this week. It's the, I've mentioned the, in the first week, the moving spotlight view, the growing block view, and presentism. And I'm going to turn to my drawing board shortly and try to try to illustrate these. But yeah, these are the three main, well, I'll say that there could be another one available, but it would be a completely crazy one to hold. I'll mention this. Um, so, I mean, just to give you the idea, right, the moving spotlight view is past, present and future all exist. And time is like, it it's, moves through uh, the timeline, uh, moves through like a 
well, like a moving spotlight. Like a, I'll, I'll explain it better when I draw it. So, in other words, moving spotlight, past, present, and future exist. Time moves. Growing block says the future doesn't exist, but the past and the present do. And in fact, the flow of time is the coming into existence of new states of affairs. So on that view, future doesn't exist, past and present do. Presentism says neither the past nor the future exist. And in fact, uh, the present moment is all there is. And then the flow of time is the going out of existence of old states of affairs and the coming into existence of new states of affairs. So, okay, moving spotlight, past, present and future exist. Grown block, future doesn't exist, past does. Presentism, only the present exists. So the missing view from those is one according to which the past doesn't exist, but the future does. We might think of it as something like a shrinking block view. So that is another possible view, but it doesn't seem to have much to recommend it. Nobody, <laughs> nobody holds that view. Uh, I should add to these as well that there's another view out there that's more of a linguistic view that I call the serious tensor view. And um, I might say a little bit about this at the end of this week, but we're not going to be focusing too much on that. Uh, but roughly speaking, the serious tensor view is the idea that to describe reality, we have to use tensed statements. Tense is ineliminable. That is, there is no way in which we can paraphrase away tensed language uh, and still describe reality correctly. And there are arguments for this. And if that's true, if we can't, uh, if we have to use tenses to describe reality, so goes the thought, then reality must itself be tensed, right? So that's a serious tense view. But as I said, we're not we're not really going to be focusing on this one. We're mainly going to be looking at the metaphysical theories. So they're called metaphysical because, well, this one really just traffics in uh, linguistic arguments. It doesn't really uh, create a metaphysical model of time. Okay, so the B theory, by contrast, then, there's no truth in the metaphor of time's flow. The universe has only a B theory structure. Um, I mean, it, we, it, what McTaggart would actually call, um, it would, it's arranged in terms of a C series rather than a B series. But we're going to ignore that particular complication. We're going to assume that if we can put things um, in an order along a line, you know, from we can call it past to, past to future. But the idea there is meant to be that, yeah, there's no flow to time at all. The ex therefore the experience we have of the flow of time is a purely subjective phenomenon and in fact there's no yeah well there's no truth to it so the metaphors only seem apt to us but they don't actually represent anything to do with how the world really is okay um so what i'm going to do i'm going to turn to my drawing board and try to you know again this is by way of introduction really just to try to draw them to give you something to picture when you think about these theories. I think that helps. Now I'm going to note here um, that, um, that I'm going to try and explain this as well when we turn to the drawing board. It's a, There's a useful way of thinking about these views as having an ontological component and an ideological component. I'll explain a bit more about that. But ontology is to do with what exists, what there is. So here, you know, we're thinking, uh, for example, the presentism says the past and the future do not exist. So in its ontology, you've only got the present, whereas in the grown block view, you've got the past and the present in the ontology, but the future isn't. And in the B theory, for example, the past, present and future are all within the ontology. I hope that may, this should make more sense in a minute when I explain it. And the ideological component then is to do with whether time flows. So all of the A-theory views have it as their ideological component that time flows, whereas presentism has it that time does not flow. So that's the idea. So it's not to do with what exists exactly, it's to do with how the things that exist are, if that makes any sense. At any rate, I'll, I'll say a bit more about that once I've done my little sketches and drawings. So let's turn to that now. Do I need to pause the recording while I do this? I don't think so. Let's just do it. So, uh, yeah, here we go. 
Okay, so then. Um, good. Let's just uh, get rid of that. Okay, so let's start off then with, so there are three A-theory view, views. The three A-theory views. And I'll try and draw them all next to each other. So the first one then, number one, is the moving spotlight view. And as we'll see shortly, this was first, or this term was coined by C.D. Broad back in the 1920s, 30s. And on this view then, it's not the view that C.D. Broad held, by the way. It's the view that he kind of attribute, attributes to McTaggart. And I think it's, it's right that if McTaggart had uh, spelled out a kind of metaphysical model of the view, I think it would have been the moving spotlight. I think it's fairly clear. So on this view then, so let's have the present moment here. So here's 2020. And along the line then, we've got the past and the future stretching out. So okay, you know, we can put whatever, so let's put 1900 in there. Obviously it goes further back. And let's put 2120 up there. So we've just got a, a sh small range. And the thought here is that the present moment it's currently residing in 2020, um, but this, what the present moment is, in fact, oh, hang on, where's the, yeah, the present moment used to be back in 1900, for example, that's the point when we were in the future, and this point is literally, it moves across the timeline, I can't really draw it, I mean, as I'm drawing that line, you've got to imagine this dot shifting completely, it doesn't, you know, it's not a line coming out of it. So the point is, you know, as time flows, this, this present moment moves from point to point along the timeline, right? And where we are at the moment is currently with this, the, the present moment exists, well, in 2020. And as time flows, it's going to continue to move on up through 2120. So you can see that this is the kind of view that McTaggart held because it's like, well... Uh, you've got the B theory layout of time, right? It's all laid out. But then you've also got this idea of a moving present along this line. Um, yeah. So if you like, we can put it, we can, we can say this, and this is going to be true. So the present moment, it's going to be true in all the A theory views, really. The present moment is metaphysically privileged. Okay. Privileged. How do you spell privileged? I'm, God, my spelling's gone terrible lately. Privileged, is it? Uh, anyway. I, you know, I used to be... I, used to, I don't think there was, a, there was a point when I could spell every single word, and it's really gone to... I seem to have lost that ability. I've, I hope it's not some sort of uh, early onset dementia or something. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, I won't let you into my hypochondriac mind. Anyway, yes, wh however you spell privilege, <laughs> the present moment is metaphysically privileged. Uh, in this case, it's privileged by being a special moment amongst the many that exist um, that's located in a particular point. And, you know, we think it's at the moment located in 2020. We're in the present. We exist in the present. That means that the metaphysically privileged moment is here in 2020. Hope that makes sense. And then that moves. So moving spotlight. Okay. So the next view is the growing, oh, let's put it in capitals, the growing block view. And on the growing block view then, the past exists, but the future does not. So here's 2020, and we can mark off the same point. So yeah, you can see there that, you know, exactly the same as the moving spotlight view, at least up till 2020. And then the idea is, well, the present moment is in fact the edge of the growing block. So I've drawn this as a single line, but you've got to imagine here that really what we've got is a three-dimensional growing block, 
well, actually a four-dimensional growing block. You've got the three spatial dimensions, and then it grows along a fourth dimension. So I've collapsed. You've got to think about this as having collapsed all the spatial dimensions into one represented by the line. And then this is like the fourth dimension, the time dimension across which you get the idea, I think. So, okay, yes. The uh, So the idea was that if we go back to, um, say, 1900, well, at that point, the growing block was smaller, right? The edge of the, the existence, the edge of the universe was located here. And what happens as time flows then is that that, that block grows. I mean, you know, literally as 1900 passed, the universe got bigger and then until 1910, 1920, 1930, you know, it grew, boom, 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 until we get to the present moment in 2020. And we are now located on the edge of the growing block. Right? That's what makes the moment we're living in, the present moment. Yes, so on this view, again, the present moment is metaphysically privileged. In this case, not as a kind of a special moment on, on a line that stretches into the future as well. But in this case, the present moment is metaphysically privileged uh, because it is the, the edge of existence, right? It's the point at which new states of affairs come into existence, okay? So the growing block view, in this sense, is often called a, a pure becoming view. Pure becoming. The idea is, at the edge of existence, new states of affairs become. They literally, right, come into existence. It's meant to be important. Okay. So, the third view, then, is presentism. Oh, put it in capitals. Presentism. Presentism is, uh, it's difficult to draw, really. It's just a simple thought that, in fact, there is only one past and the future don't exist, so we can draw it like that. It's just all that exists is the present moment. It's also a pure becoming view. So, like the growing block view. Why? Well, because as time flows, new states of affairs come into existence. So, obviously, you know, 2020 won't last forever. Um, 2021 is just about, and that's going to be characterized by the coming into existence of new states of affairs. But unlike, the, unlike the, the growing block view, they also think that as time flows, the old states of affairs go out of existence. So 1900, you know, here, and again, it's difficult to draw. You have to, you'd have to, oops. So yeah, at one point, 1900 was present, 1900. And then as time flows, that, that the states of affairs were literally wiped out of existence when... 1901 came along and then those states of affairs were wiped out of existence since the next state you know constant sort of dis, dis, constant going out of existence and coming into existence of states of affairs and the idea is meant to be that yes here we are in 2020 the current state of affairs that exists um, so again the present moment is metaphysically privileged in this case, because it's the only moment that exists. So, yeah. And that's it. Those are the three main A-theory views. I said to you that there is another possible view, which would be, uh, well, I suppose you might call it the shrinking block view or something. The shrinking block. We're not going <laughs> to take this at all seriously, uh, but it would be one where the present moment exists, the future exists, but the past does not. And as time flows, so we'd be located here, as time flows, this block would shrink. So states of affairs would go out of existence. You get the idea, I think. Nobody holds this view because, well, it just, it just seems to be wildly implausible. I'll say a few quick words about why people hold each of these views. So people are hold a theory views precisely because they want to um, 
say that there are these kind of movement to time. They want to um, hold on to the idea that the reason why we experience time as having this flow and this movement is because it really does have some sort of a flow or movement. That's the main, one of the main reasons really for believing the A-theory is precisely because our experience experiences seem to represent time as being flowing and the thought there is well the easiest or the best thing to say is that those experiences represent reality as it really is so yeah that's one of the main views reasons for believing it um, the moving spotlight is probably the simplest of the, the, the views in the sense that it just has well maybe it's not the simplest but it's certainly uh, you know the present the future and the past are all represented equally on this view and that might be some sort of a reason for believing it that there's no distinction really between the past the present and the future ontologically speaking you don't have things coming into existence and so on the growing block view people want to adopt this view because of this intuition that we have I suppose metaphysical intuition perhaps there will be other arguments for it we'll see that the future uh, or rather the past is fixed but the future is open right so it's a, it's a common thought that what's gone on in the past can't change it's fixed um, whereas uh, the future is, is completely open so what's going to happen tomorrow it doesn't it, it's not yet determined it's not yet fixed things could happen uh, yeah so okay that's one of the main reasons for believing the growing block view and presentism, why do people believe presentism? Because lots of people claim, and we spoke a bit about this in the first week, that it's the common sense view. Of course the past doesn't exist. Dinosaurs don't exist. Of course they don't. I mean, it's mad to think that dinosaurs exist. Only the things in the present exist. The future future things don't exist. Past. So it's to do with this kind of intuition. But okay, there we have the three A theory views. Now, by contrast, then, um, let's, uh, I hope it's all right, let's uh, clear this off. I hope it's okay to do so. The B theory, or th there are three A theory views, but there is only one B theory view. The B theory. And we can actually draw it, it's similar to the growing block. We draw a timeline with 2020 on it and you know uh, what did I have here I had 1900 and uh, 2120 say yeah so we got this timeline and we draw it in exactly the same way as the, the, as the moving spotlight view um, because the B theory thinks that the past present and future all exist it's just that on this view there's no red dot <coughs> there's no privileged present so Oh, well, let's, uh, the present moment is not metaphysically privileged. Okay. Priv, haha, <laughs> privileged, oh, I'm going I'm to look up how to spell that. I just can't remember whether that's an I or an E. Ah, terrible. Anyway. So the present moment is not metaphysically privileged. All right, you might say, okay, so how do we explain then why it seems to us that it is? So here we are. Um, and the idea is meant to be that, well, the reason we think that the moment, present moment is privileged is just because, in fact, this is where we're located at the moment. So I've mentioned this before as well. It's an indexical. So when we say uh, now is 2020 I'm not sure that's grammatical but okay now is 2020 the term now just serves to in a similar way so here oops here is Nottingham we might say now functions in the same way as here it just refers to boom, the time at which you're at like here refers to the place at which you're at. These are indexical terms, they get called. Other indexical terms are things like I, so the first person reflexive pronoun. When I use the term I, it just refers to to me, right? It's indexical because it kind of loops back and refers to something to do with the context of utterance. 
So the idea is, well, yeah, there's nothing metaphysically special about about now. Um, we think now is 2020 because we're located now. But if we go back and I don't know who was alive in 1900, let's have Winston Churchill say with his cigar and did he wear a bowler hat? I think he did, didn't he? <laughs> anyway, doesn't matter. When Winston Churchill says now, he's referring to 1900 um, because that's where the time at which he's located at. Um, but Winston Churchill is just as real as we are. Um, and yeah, he, there's no difference apart from he's just located at a temporal distance from us. So exactly the same as the here, right? We're located in Nottingham. But we don't think that Nottingham is metaphysically special. There are other people located in Australia and so on. And when they say here, they're referring to Australia. When we say here or wherever they are, Melbourne or whatever. Yeah, so that's the idea. The B theory, all we've got is time laid out in terms of B theory relations or B relations. And um, there's no movement to time. Yeah. So that's the view. There's no, um, there's no, uh, yeah, no sense in which, well, I'm just repeating myself really, but there's no flow to time. So, okay, um, the last thing I want to do in this introductory, we'll, we'll look at these views in a bit more detail in a minute. In fact, we're not, in fact, going to look too much at the B theory because we'll be, we'll be covering the B theory in later weeks in various other things that we're going to be talking about. Uh, in particular, you know, we'll we'll see that there are pretty good arguments for the B theory when we come to the the lecture on the experience of time, which I think is week seven, is that right, or is it week eight? Anyway, later on. Um, but the last thing I want to do in this short introduction, we, we're focusing on looking at the the A theory views in this this week. But the last thing I want to do then is draw this this little. I think that this table is quite useful, so I'll explain it. And um, if I did a second edition of the book, I'd probably put this in because I do think it's quite useful. So if we have along this side, we have along the view. So let's put in the four different views then that we're considering. So we've got the moving spotlight. We've got the growing block. We've got presentism, and then we've got the B theory. So there's the, these are A theory views, right? And then we've got the B theory. There's only one of those. Uh, okay. So then, if we consider what we might call the ontological component of these views, ontologic, onto. Oh, actually, why am I putting it up there? So the ontological component. So ontology is just to do with ontological, with what exists. Ontological component. Component. Oh, you know what? I think I did want to put it above. Sorry, a bit annoying. So I'll put this up here. Ontological comp. I'll just put that. And then we could have down here three boxes. You'll see the point of this shortly. So let's have past exists, present exists. And I should say this, right, when we're talking about the past existing and the present existing and the future existing, we might we, we don't have to think about the past as being a kind of a, just a, a univocal thing. The past might be constituted by lots of objects. So we could talk here in, instead about past objects existing or future objects existing rather than the future and the past itself. So really, the idea that the past exists might be thought of best as past things exist. Future exists. Okay, so look. None of the, all of these views agree. We can put a tick in each one of this. They all agree that the present exists. So in that sense, the ontological component, they all contain the present. The moving spotlight, 
also think that the past and the future exist and the growing block agrees that the past exists but denies that the future exists presentism also thinks that the future doesn't exist but that the present uh, the past also doesn't exist and the B theory in fact agrees with the moving spotlight view in terms of its ontology that the past present and future exist so then if we put in here the ideological component ideological comp this is to do with we can just put it as time flows in some sense and yes the A theory views all think that time flows whereas the B theory thinks it doesn't and that gives you a useful kind of a, a summary to think about the the kind of uh, the ways in which the views are similar to each other and are different so the B theory and the moving spotlight view are the same in their ontology but different in their ideology whereas for example the moving spotlight and the growing block view are the same in their ideology but different in their ontology so okay it's just a, a useful table for kind of summarizing the differences between the views all right so that's that's it for the introductory video oh what I think I will say one last thing uh, which is gonna come in later so you know I've we started off with those two metaphors on the first one uh, well actually that wasn't the first one on the first one time moves past so this river flows past the boat on the on the second one this boat sort of moves across the river so those are two metaphors I just want to point out that in fact those two metaphors basically oops, amount to the same thing oh dear what we've got is well in some sense we've got well we've got hmm, how can I draw it we've either got we've got two things we've got time moving or, well I don't really know how to explain this but I want to say this that there's there's no real difference between the two because all you've got really are two separate if we've got gonna have flow or movement we're gonna have two axes we can have one thing moving relative to another and that looks to be well I'll tell you what maybe I'll leave this for now but I hope that you, you, you kind of get this idea that if you've got movement of time you've got to have two separate dimensions you've got to have a, a dimension for time to move in let's say and um, okay I'll, I'll, maybe I'll come to that when I deal with the uh, the moving spotlight yeah maybe I shouldn't have tried to introduce it here okay so forget that for now it'll come in later um, but okay good uh, that, that should do it hopefully that's a reasonable way of introducing this stuff and I'm now going to move on to talking specifically about the uh, the moving spotlight view and looking at some objections. Thanks.